Hey, what's up guys? Spot the Aussie here with the gameplay video of the new hero, Scrap the Scavenger. They call me Scrap. And him I call Vorax. I recommend playing this hero as a push and secondary support. With that in mind, my item build is very basic to begin with. Minor totems, which I think are very underrated, along with standard trees and mana pots that keep me in the lane early game, and of course Merrick's Bounty. Merrick's Bounty is an essential item except for hard carries, mid, and junglers. You have to view this item for its return of investment and passive income. It's the difference between having an extra few wards mid game and potential buybacks in the late game. As you can see, we're off to a pretty good start. We get the first Bloodlust, which is a great start for us. Followed up by a cheeky uh, hook by Devourer, who also pops up top. And we get the secondary kill there on Witch Slayer. I always level Mousetrap at the start of a game. It's a very effective stunception. By stunception, I mean it's a stun within a stun. Initially, a mouse is thrown down, which causes a mini stun and magic damage followed by the mouse damaging and stunning enemies who remain in the area or that walk within its range. Let's have another look at that team fight that just happened just to see how effective the mouse trap is. Devara gets a great hook, I throw down the mouse trap, the mini stun and some damage happens. The mouse is now set, we're going to get the kill on, on the voodoo, but more importantly you see that mouse run back and run back into the Witch Slayer and actually get a stun. This allows Gemini to actually jump into the fight, slow down Witch Slayer once again, and Dr. Repulse is already heading up north, makes a call that he's going to go deep onto that tower, and they're able to get the second kill, which effectively goes back to our play with that initial mousetrap. So let's have a look at his second ability, the Zoomerang. It's got a long range, 1000 range to be precise. You throw it, it returns back to the thrower just like an Aboriginal Boomerang from the Native Australians. You'll see here there's a great initiative by Gemini to go out for the stun. I've also got the Zoomerang, so we have a great team coordination happen right here. And uh, we just pop which Slayer like he's not even standing there. And that tower doesn't even matter when that happens. Another ability is Scavenge, so when creeps die now, they drop morsels that can only be picked up by Scrap the Scavenger himself. Uh, they're not of, of use in any way to any other hero bar Scrap. So upon using morsels, which is stored once you pick them up, you are granted health, and the surrounding heroes around you are also granted health, and it will also passively grant you 8 experience each time you pick them up, which is a great passive ability to have, and I know many guides actually uh, try and push for this to be the first you level, but I kind of, I'm not convinced, I kind of feel like you need to get Mousetrap uh, in order to help you and potentially the other lane partner in case you're getting ganked. The most important thing in my eyes is survivability, so what I'll do is I'll get Mousetrap and then I'll get Scavenge, and uh, that will allow me to keep up with the other heroes in regards to their leveling. And you would have just witnessed, we've overjumped one of the towers, and we've copped a bit of a loss because of that, and this uh, this game's definitely on. I popped Merrick's Bounty just then, and it's at 4.50, uh, and that's under 10 minutes, so that's a 200 additional dollars, which has been a great return of income, and you, as you can see, this is just going to be a bonus for us as we go deeper and deeper into the game. Um, I've also got my Blood Chalice, so I kind of feel like, given that you can use Morsels, a bit of a health rev, then an important aspect of being able to use this hero is toing and froing with Mousetrap and also Zoomerang, which have short cooldowns. So it's necessary to get some sort of a mana item, and for me, Chalice is the sweet spot. Uh, the next item I'm looking to invest is uh, to keep me alive, basically, is a Null Stone. Uh, this is going to stop three heroes, in particular Witch Slayers, Minimization, and Golden Bullet. Emerald Warden and his Silence, and also Voodoo Jester and his Cocktail. At the 12 minute mark, you'll see me waiting for the next room. Uh, Defile is actually caught off guard with the same idea of collecting the room, and now you'll uh, see I throw my mousetrap behind him. I purposely aim it there. It's either going to force him into the river further, or into a stun, and either way, he's actually going to end up dead here. Uh, you'll also witness another team fight just here. Uh, Voodoo Jess is there, but Legionnaire also pops up. I throw my mousetrap onto Legionnaire. This isolates Voodoo Jester because once Legionnaire is stunned, even if he tries to go back in to help Voodoo, he's going to be further stunned by my mouse following him for two seconds. If 
following on from those kills, we've been able to push bot lane, and you'll see that I summon Vorax to push mid, which I communicate with my teammates. At middle lane, here comes the Vorax. Vorax is coming from mid. Can we start? Can we push bot to move to mid? By the time we do that, we'll be there. As Scrap, you need to take control of the game, and communication is key to doing this. Every time Vorax has been summoned, give your team the heads up as to which lane he's pushing and any potential strategies that you have in mind. When Vorax attacks a tower, he stops the tower's ability to defend itself or the heroes it's protecting. You'll see here I love a mousetrap in between Defiler and Legionnaire. I've also activated my more cells to feed Vorax health and extra damage as Gemini follows up from my earlier stun. I throw a cheeky uh, mousetrap in between Voodoo and Emerald. The mini stun stops Voodoo Jester from channeling his spirit walls and leaves the two of them both vulnerable. It's unlucky here that I cop a silver bullet from Witch Slayer, but again, the momentum is definitely now favor as we're able to kick off an easy tower at mid. I've now also completed my uh, Null Stone, which uh, stops me from being mowed down just like you saw. I've missed the formal introduction of Vorax. Vorax is of course Scrap's special ability. He's a non-controllable unit which you summon to push a lane. In addition to his earlier abilities I've mentioned, he one-hits creeps and will attack enemy heroes if they get in his way. Personally, I never send Vorax to the lane that I or my teammates are currently pushing, despite this being the most popular opinion of most guides. Let me elaborate. It takes a considerable amount of time for Vorax to catch up to the lane it's pushing. This provides a considerable amount of time for the opposing team to set up key positions to defend. Think of it this way, if a lane is pushed and you meet up with Vorax in another lane coordinated with your teammates when he's at the forefront, you will more than often split up the enemy team and able to pick them off like you saw in the previous fight. Let's have a look at this next team fight plays out, I'm currently pushing top, mid's already pushed where Legionnaire has to defend and bot's been pushed by the rest of my team. You'll see that we all meet up at mid, and I'll inject some uh, immediate impact by picking off Witch Slayer using my distance. Now you see, as all three lanes are currently pushed, we'll all rotate down bottom where Vorax is. He's currently pushed a tower and also a Rax. I'll again use my distance to pick off Voodoo Jester. Flip on Morsels to start giving my team some health regen as well as Vorax with some additional damage, and follow through with Circa, who goes a little bit deep here. Now my immediate thinking right now is I need to make sure Legionnaire dies. As Legion's solid tank and only thing really stopping us from getting a Rax, it's important he's unable to walk away and uh, go back to the well and regen. Uh, as we're able to pick him off, Gemini is able to clean up Defiler here and take down the ranged Rax. In the next team fight, you'll see that it uh, actually isn't really well coordinated. Dr. Dive Bomb's way too deep, Devourer follows as the Circa. I'm uh, just comfortable back here using Scrap for what he was made for, range. And you've got to remember that when you enter into every team fight. I do want to highlight how effective Scrap can be at uh, jungle farming with his short cooldowns and damage bursts if you need the extra gold. Another neat trick is that Zoomerang will bag and drag the morsels that it passes through. Very useful when you don't want to put yourself in a vulnerable position. My final thoughts about Scrap the Scavenger. He's a very different concept hero to the existing pool on offer. In difference to the typical push heroes like your Poliwog, Slither, you can't simply waltz up to a lane and push when ready. An element of strategy more to do with the essence of timing must be considered in order to make the most out of Scrap the Scavenger, more specifically his sidekick Vorax. The other key element is team coordination. A lot of that comes down to you being vocal on your mic and hero selections complementing each other. I've already noticed a few players complaining about Morsels now being injected in the recent patch and only act as screen filler, given that Scrap is the only hero that utilizes them. However, I can only imagine that further down the track, Morsels will also be used by additional new heroes. I can also imagine that, given new heroes are generally nerfed after one week of being released, Scrap will also fall prey to this. I think we'll see Scrap receive longer cooldowns, as he's very effective in capable hands when a teamfight is dragged out. With that in mind, get a microphone, 
be vocal, buy the odd ward or two, and enjoy the hero for bringing a chest dimension to the game. This has been a Spot the Aussie gameplay video. If you enjoyed the content, please give me a like and subscribe for more.